Hello everybody and welcome back to this week's Day Fishy Adventure. We got the first real rain of the summer. It's been thunder and lightning all morning today. As we've been packing for this amazing trip we're going to head out on, we have about a three hour drive until we meet up with our special guest and we're going 36 hours, no food, no water, other than what we can catch with these right here. Let's get moving. You too. All right, game on. We've met up with Taku. He's in the van right behind us, and we're headed to our first spot to get our first part of our meal. The thing is, we're gonna do this forage type of video here where we try to get every single piece of our menu from the great outdoors. We're gonna forage today, we're gonna be fishing, we're gonna be picking, we're gonna be doing all the fun things that you can possibly do in one sitting. So, we're gonna go find our fishing spot, pull on in, try to catch us our first meal of the day. Oh, and a sculpin jig, there we go. I'm ready to go. There we go. Now, the river we found here, very, very small. It's still very early in the season, but this thing's got a lot of fish coming up it. So I'm just gonna use my little trout rod here. I got a little ultralight. These fish probably aren't gonna be giant anyways. We're looking for coho salmon or any salmon that's legal to keep. So I'm gonna get these rods ready, get Taku's rod ready. Let's get down the trail. What is it, babe? I'm guessing prunes. It kind of looks pruney. We haven't even got to fishing yet and we found two things to eat. We got blackberries and we got a prune tree. Might have to make some prune candy. Got the low hanging fruit over there. <laughs> what? I said getting the low hanging fruit over there, huh? <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. It's ripe? Yeah. Heck yeah. You want one, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's really ripe. Is that one good? Unreal. We're gonna have to pick a bunch of those. Delish. So all I'm gonna be using today because the water's so low and clear, it's just a single bead. These things will kind of start acting like trout when the water gets like this. Any big pieces of bait or spinners or anything, they'll just stray away from and run away. But you get that nice slow floating action of a bead, and it works really good. And there it is. And all I'm gonna put on there is just one piece of split shot. Here we go. It's like Jurassic Park, babe. The Velociraptors are gonna get us. All right, we're in Jurassic Park. We're going to find the fish. I cannot wait. We talked to some other anglers coming out and they said there are fish everywhere. So this is, once again, one of those Pacific Northwest survivals. It isn't so much survival, more it's just having fun and harvested amazing food. So let's get to the water, see what we can find. Right now, been, been the trail there. Yeah, it's been 600 probably in the last half hour. Okay, sounds good. Okay. We just walked by another angler. He said there was 600 fish that swam past him in the last hour. <laughs> I'm almost about to run. Choco Nation. Choco Nation. You see it's out here, Chocos. Okay, that looks good to me. Oh my God, they're swimming through right now. Ton of them. Ton of them. Ton of them are going by. Look at them go by. There they go. A million miles an hour. There's 20 right there. Oh, yeah. They're swimming. Oh, they're freaking out. <laughs> oh my god, this is so cool. Here we go. Gotta roll up the shorts. Them up. Okay, here we go. It's on. I see where they're all coming from. There's a little pool right under this tree here, and there's a bazillion of them. Little, you gotta get out of the water. Come here. Now. Dude, Taco, come here. There's probably 700 of them right here. I'm not kidding. Look at them. Yeah, I see them. <laughs> I'm not joking. Come here. From here down around the corner, I bet there's five to 700. That is a big coho right there. Here, look. Watch this. Oh! <laughs> yeah! Oh my god, they're stacked, I'm dude. not joking, dude. There's 600 they're of them in there. They're stacked. <laughs> a little pink worm. Okay, I got a little oh, micro worm in there. Twiddle, I'm gonna twiddle. They're literally stacked. This is insane.
that was it. That was it, dude. Got him. Got him. Oh, yep. Oh. He's gone. Damn it. Hold on, little. Come here. Yeah. Oh, no. Got him. Right in the mouth. Oh, damn it. First cast. First cast through there. This spot has a little more current. It's a little easier to catch him. Uh -huh. Here we go. God, oh my God. Nice and shiny. Yeah, he's, wow. he's nice. Though. Look at him a little bump. He's nice. Dude, dinner. Nice yes. First one on the board, dude. We got it. We got plums. We got blackberries. Now we got coho salmon. Way to go, brother. Yeah. Woo. That's a pretty one, dude. The bead just fell off, but there we go. Might need a little another bonk. Yeah. Nice fish. Nice fish. Okay, I'm switching. And I'm using one of my trout tactics here. I'm going with a sculpin jig. He got that one to eat the bead in that fast water, but I'm gonna go with my sculpin jig, see if I can't get in here. Oh, she's got one. Oh! oh. You can hear that thing come off, it was like a gunshot. <laughs> okay, Taku and Jocelyn are beating us. Not that it's a competition, but everything's a competition. We gotta get one. That's the nice part about a, a, a thing like this and especially the beautiful part of salmon is a lot of times only one will be plenty for your whole party depending on how many people you have with you. It only really takes one fish to feed so many people which is really cool so, but I still want one. Are you kidding me dude? Oh they're all starting to go up there. Finally came off. Kind of I had him too. He just got wrapped up in the moss. Shit, lost him. It's okay though. We're starting to figure it out. The hard part is when there's so many fish like that is to try to not snag them. You don't want to actually catch these fish anywhere but the mouth. It's the only legal place to hook them. And when there's so many of them, it's hard to keep it in there long enough for each fish to even get a chance to bite it. So I'm doing my best. Try not to snag that any of these fish, but three of them now I've hooked in the mouth. And I need to get one. We got enough food because of talk to, but I really want to catch one. Spotlight's on. <laughs> um, oh! <laughs> uh. It's like a video game. No, it, honestly, it's just as suspenseful as a video game, too. It's a big one. Little, get out of there. I got a power stance going. Come on. Come on. Stay out of that. No. Not after all this. That's a good fish. Oh, God. That's a really good one. Oh, they're so fresh. Oh, this is. My heart's pounding. My heart's pounding. My heart's pounding. Yes. That's a good oh one. Dude. That's a good one. Did you guys see that? Oh, Beauty. Oh, my Beauty. God. <laughs> Holy crap! Look at that one! Oh. That's gonna have some nice meat. Wow! Yeah! Oh, what just this? happened? That was insanity. How did that even happen? He was wrapped around six logs. Yeah. At least. Holy crap! There he is. Beautiful coho. Probably the craziest fight I've had in a long time. Biggest one we've seen. Heck yeah. Woo! Well, that's one buck. One dough and a heck of a meal. 
on to the next adventure. Alright guys, we're gonna go get some plums and see some of these are kind of out of my reach, so I might see if there's somewhere where I can actually climb up the tree and reach them. But let's grab some of these that are in reach already. So I'm gonna pull this down. Perfect. These are so good. Look at that. It's amazing. You don't want them to be too hard. You don't want them to be too soft. And you don't want them to be too buggy. And you don't want to drop them. Okay. I'm not wearing my hiking shoes. I'm in my sandals. So I can't really get to the tree very well, but I'm gonna go right over here and climb that way and then go from there. Okay, will you hand me the, the bag? Thank you, Sean. Is up there? I just hit the jackpot up here. Jackpot. Jackpot. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's our bag of plums. We don't need very many. And we honestly, we don't want too many. This stuff is great to get your bowels moving, so. You don't want too many. Here we go, here's our plums. Looking good. That one does it. All right. Well, silly me. Thought for gas, talking went ahead of us, and I took the wrong turn. But, there's a bright side to everything, and we get to drive along this really beautiful lake now but we killed about 20 minutes. So we still have quite a bit of daylight left. A lot of driving on this trip so far to get up to where we're going. But this is gonna be either a 36 or a 48 hour adventure. So we haven't quite decided yet exactly how this is gonna go. Nevertheless, sometimes the wrong tour pans out and you get to see something beautiful. Good this all looks. Mushies! Uh-oh, I gave it away. You go this way, I go that way? Yep, I'll go downhill, you go up. Right. It's awfully muggy, the mosquitoes are out. Yeah. It rained here the last couple days. It might be the first mushrooms found, but I've seen them been, I've seen the chanterelles being found all along the coastline. Yeah. Basically in some of the Cascade range, so I think we're in the right place. Sounds good okay, to me. rendezvous. Let's do this. See you later. All right. Look what Oda found. Right off the bat. Look what the girl found. Look what Oda Buck found. Nice little bowl. You can Horns see where cut it's off. Been cut right there. Yeah, somebody must have dumped it here. Look at the teeth, babe. You can do scary things with those. <laughs> okay, already finding good stuff. But this, if you're looking for chanterelle mushrooms, is exactly what you want to see. We're gonna kind of go down on this deep dark holler. We want an area that really holds the moisture. So somewhere around a creek, north facing especially, especially if you're looking for the first ones. The north facing hillsides don't get as much sunlight, so they stay wetter. Wetness is what we want. So let's head down into the deep, see if we can find a wet spot, find a mushroom. Okay, here it is. Now you can see here why we think this is gonna be the best spot. It's because, again, you have these dips in elevation. You get all these pockets for water to hold, and you have a lot of food basically for the chanterelle mushroom. All this leaf situation that falls down onto the ground, all those fresh leaves that fall, there's a lot of nutrients in those. And that's what fuels the mushrooms, as well as the mycelium. So all the dead rotten stuff that's underneath the ground is what's gonna feed those mushrooms. So let's see if we can find them. Treacherous walking. There's gotta be some mushies down there. I can smell them. I can smell them. Whoa, what is this guy? What is that little? Oh, it's a big old bleat. King bleat. Normally this thing would be delicious, but she's a little old. All eaten up by squirrels. Got ants all over it living inside of it. Probably a bunch of maggots. Really nice mushroom though. Normally we could eat this, but this one's bad. So we're gonna leave it here to spread its spores and let some more grow next time. Oh, yes! You found one? We found chicken of the wood in its prime. Oh my God, I see it, I see it. 
She found chicken in the woods, you guys. Brooke just found a huge chicken in the woods. Yes, it's the perfect size. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Heck yeah. Let's get this cut. So the way you want to cut these two, you guys, if it is really woody, and when I mean woody stuff, it's very hard further down into the mushroom. We want to cut it off right at the edge here because if you take this stump off, off of the stump, take the stump from the stump, it will never grow back. So we're going to take our knife. You want to do the honors, babe? Yes. Yep. You're not going to go too? Yep, perfect. Just nice and close to it there. Look at this. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. And it tastes like chicken. Yeah, so people... Slug almost got it. Yeah. I think that it's the texture that's a lot like chicken. It tastes like flavor. chicken, I feel like. I never thought it tasted like chicken, but uh, the texture was chicken eating me. Yes. I had it, but well, where there's one, there's more. Yes. Sweet. There's a lot of mushrooms out here, actually, right now. It feels mushroomy. I'm all clammy yep. and sweaty. Oh, smell it. Oh, God. Oh, wow, that smells so good. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. We'll put it in the Do we want to? crochet basket Ooh. that my mom did. Way to go, Mom. Way to go, Chris. Way to go. Here we go. That Woo! That was teamwork, too. Yep. Because I thought I saw a different... I was looking at this one right here. This is the mushroom I was looking at. I told her to come over here, and we got the cross cross creek spot by Brooke. Let's go find more. Yes, yeah, stay on the left side so you can look back this way, but also be looking over there. No way. Look at this. Bear skull. Big old dog skull. Wow, big old coyote. It might even be a bear. I think it's a black bear. I'm almost freaking positive that's a black bear skull. Wow. That's pretty cool. Look at those big old canines on it. This is nonstop action today, guys. What a freaking perfect day. Now, we just need chanterelles. Are you serious right I'm now? I'm pretty sure it's a bear skull. No way. Yeah, you see how short the nose is? Holy crap. Oh, I'm so jealous. Why did you find this? Because we both found I'm it. I'm obsessed basically. with them. Okay, one more mushroom. Looks like a little milk cap. These ones could be edible, but. Oh, actually. Yep, milk cap. It's got gills, chintrils. Don't have gills when I mean gills because it looks like a fish's gills. There's these like, secular little pieces of flesh that are on the mushroom, and that's what we call gills. Chanterelles have like grooves in them. And it's very obvious to tell. We'll show you here in just a minute when we find one. Okay, we got some miner's lettuce just ran upon. It's a little bit old. I don't think we're gonna pick it. But this stuff here, these leafy, the little small little flowers. Very good lettuce. One of my actual favorite styles of lettuce in the world. We're on an old road now too, this is perfect. For some reason, chanterelles seem to love disturbed soil. If it was logged before, if somebody's been moving through it, or if an old road has grown over, like whether nature's taken back the road, usually poses to be a perfect spot to find chanterelles. So this looks absolutely perfect. Keep moving, keep moving. Got food, everyone! Sweet. Woo! Nice. They're nice and fresh too. Yeah, they're fresh. I think perfect. they just these popped were not out. As fresh. No? Look at this guy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, these are way nice. tender. Yeah. Yeah, I only got like the outer margins. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, like, yeah. It's pretty woody. Um, you can tell how much firm Oh, it might have hit some sun. Yeah, guys, look at the difference. So they'll get old like this quick. So you kind of get to find them yeah, just at the right out. time. So yeah, that's the different stages. This one maybe a couple days, maybe even a week older. This one's probably come out in the last week, yeah. but uh, nonetheless, Fresh they'll all fruit. taste good. Woohoo! Yeah. Well, Yay. let's move a little bit further. Yeah. Maybe go further out and find another north facing. It seemed like all these little goalies where it got wet, there was quite a bit of mushroom life. So well, maybe let's turn around, head downhill, yeah. see if we can find some more. Look how perfect my hair is right now. It's ridiculous. Oh my God. Why don't you, why aren't you commenting on it? I didn't notice. Well, notice. Uh, notice. 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 Tell you. Oh, it's wet in here. Oh, I'm already seeing some mushroom life. Looks like a little porcini almost. Porcini. Whoa, check this out. Banana slug. Now, if we were in a survival situation, you can actually eat these. They say they're actually pretty good. 
That's a giant one. Jesus, Moses. What a cool thing. Feeling a bit sluggish today? We're gonna do an ice buy, everybody. Me and Brooke just spotted two more chicken in the woods, long distance. Sean's gonna zoom in where he has both of them. Actually, I kind of gave it away, but it has both of them, but comment up below where you actually see them. If you can see them, they're bright orange and on a stump, but there's two of them. So comment below, top of it. But I almost said it again, comment below. Let's go pick them. I that one first. From where the sports came down from. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the old one in here, guys. Come check this out. No, that one's fresh. No, no, look. Oh, okay. No, this isn't the original one we saw. There's even more back in here. And there's more to the... But you can see here, guys, this is the evidence. There's dead chicken in the woods from last year all over on the ground, so... Another really good reason to leave the stump of the ones that you find. So come on over here. These ones here are actually a little less ripe, kind of like the ones Taco got. So we're going to show you how he cut them and what he was talking about when they're a little bit further along, how you want to cut them. Okay, so here we go. Now you can see it's a little bit darker color. So I'm going to go basically to where it's the softest, right around this rim. I'd say right about here. So I'm going to give it a little rim. So right around that little lip. There we go, and there it is. Nice and squishy still on that piece. Nice and squishy, looking good. How are these ones looking? Pretty old. Ah! Yeah, those ones are pretty woody. I'm actually gonna leave those ones. Let's go and check out the other tree. Right there. Don't cut your fingers. Oh my God, those are good. Just take off the lippies. Put a whippies. Thimble. Ooh. Those are called thimble Sim berries. No. They feel like velvet. I think it might be thimble because it fits in your Mm-hmm, the big ones. Yeah. Really good, mm -hmm. wow. Interesting taste. Mm, it's like candy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to paradise. Found the beach right at sunset. We got probably an hour or so left to sunset. If you didn't know, four fingers is about an hour. Just what I say. But we're here, we're ready to cook. Those of you that are joining us from Taku's channel, thank you so much for coming over from Outdoor Chef Life and spending the day with us and seeing the world through our eyes here at Stay Fishy Adventures. This is what our eyes are seeing right now, and it is time to cook. You guys, if you wanna see Taku's menu idea tonight, he's got a really, really amazing recipe picked out that he's actually gonna be putting into his upcoming cookbook. He's working on some really cool stuff. Can't wait to see it, I can't wait to get one. So if you wanna see his recipe, which I know is gonna blow your mind, go on over to Outdoor Chef Live here on YouTube, watch that thing, and come on back and see us. But for this one, he's actually gonna help me do it. So I have a special idea for how we're gonna cook this fish tonight. Let's get this underway. All right, guys, Taku is gonna do the honors filleting this fish. We're gonna pull one fillet up this side because. Again, these fish are big enough. We don't really need to take a whole fish for dinner. It would definitely go, not to waste, but it would be left over and I like eating my salmon nice and freshly cooked. So he's gonna whack this fillet off and we're gonna get to add in the rest of the ingredients for the recipe. Whenever I fillet salmon, I like to take the head off, take the guts off and usually scale them as well. So uh, we're just gonna skip the scaling. It just takes a little bit more time and we're running out of time. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna do that real quick. I like to flip them over on this side, right here. I start off right on the back, and then go st straight to the center bone. You want to hear some clicking and clacking along those bones. Once I get there to the middle, I'll go right on that rib cage, cut through the rib cage, just go along that spine. And I always like to poke a little hole right there. It gets a nice little hold. Oh, look how nice and red that is. It's beautiful. Yum. Cool, there's one side. All right, Taku's gonna get the grill lit and I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients. One trick I like to do, especially on a fish like this, even though this thing's so fatty, I like to add some butter to it. And so I'm actually gonna score this meat 
um, and I'm gonna make these nice incisions down to the skin. That way it'll cook a little bit quicker, but also I'm gonna be stuffing those scores with our mushrooms. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start scoring it first. I'm gonna go about every couple inches. I'm gonna go pretty deep, probably about every two inches here. I'm going fairly deep down and in there so that I can have enough room to get the butter and the mushrooms in there because all wild mushrooms go much, much better with butter. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna try to cut these as long ways as I can. I'm gonna cut these nice little strips like this. Look how beautiful that mushroom is. Oh, it's cutting so crispy too, Taku. Nice and tender. Perfect. The one I found is kind of like the equivalent of eating a colored up salmon. <laughs> yeah. A bit this chewy. One, this one is the chroma right here. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this in just nice little strips. And those of you that are over watching from Taku's channel, I'm uh, Jordan Kinnigi, it's a little bit of a hillbilly. So I have a little bit more hillbilly recipes on mine. <laughs> Taku's channel, I must say, is much more gourmet and much more about the flavors of the ingredients, but my mama taught me to like butter. So I pretty much <laughs> use butter or mayonnaise or something in almost every recipe. So be ready for that if you're over here watching us. Okay, I'm gonna slice my strips of butter in half. I'm gonna open up my filet. Add a couple chunks of mushy. Look at that, fancy. Huh? Look at that. Fancy. Like mushroom here. stuffed. Just like that. Normally, like in a, with these, this kind of mushroom, I'll usually do like a cream sauce or something um, to kind of glaze that salmon with, but I didn't, we're trying to keep this as organic as possible. And you know, I did cheat a little bit here with butter, but that's okay. Once again, mama always said a stick of butter will make anything taste good. I'm gonna make myself a little boat. A little boat. I'll transfer my fish over to my boat. Kind of make this square here. Fold in the sides a little bit. There's a nice little structure to it so a lot of that good stuff doesn't get out of there. So, second ingredient is a little secret sauce we've been working on. Secret mom sauce that Brooke's mom has been making for us. Might be releasing it sometime here soon, either on Addicted or on Stay Fishy. We got some of my man Taku's Barnacle Bullwhip Kelp sauce. He also has a chili sauce that he made with these guys. Absolutely amazing. I'm gonna go a nice little drizzle of that. It's gonna give it a nice little, kind of that seafoody taste. It has that, that kelp in there. It's a little bit salty, a little bit sweet. Nice little drizzle of that. And then also a little secret seasoning that we're working on right now. And this really is mostly kind of, it's all an all around seasoning. We're gonna call it the Hippie Callaway seasoning. It's kind of an all around seasoning. We haven't fully developed it yet, but this is one that I made at home. You guys will start to learn a lot more about it here soon. It's a nice little covering of it. Very, very light drizzle of mayonnaise, mainly for looks and just a little more fattiness. It'll help cook those mushrooms in that short amount of time. And then we're gonna cover this bad boy up. Okay, on to the grill we go. And I'm gonna do one more crazy thing here. I'm gonna add myself a little bit more shelter. Just like that, kind of lock in just a little more heat. Now we set, have us another non-alcoholic beer, and we wait. That's smelling done. Let's do a little test run. Look, T. Oh yeah. That's yeah. done. Beauty. That's done. Cool little grill here. Who makes this? Camp Chef. Camp Chef? Mm -hmm. He's got everything, Camp Chef. Camp Chef, you see us out here? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Ha ha ha. Ooh, it smells good. What else did you put in here? So what I use, I did the butter, mushroom, a tiny bit of Worcestershire sauce on it. Oh for kind of the salt. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of garlic, like ground garlic, yeah. a little bit of onion and parsley. Yeah. Uh, and then I just did a tiny bit of mayo on there yeah. just for that nice creaminess with each yeah. bite. Okay, everybody, moment of truth, let's do it. So mushy, I'm gonna go for a belly piece. 
Got to get some mushy in there. That's the best piece. Oh, God. Look at that. Mushroom's nice and tender and cooked. It's so red, huh? It looks like a sockeye almost. Wow. Hot. Very hot. <laughs> this is a winner. That is a winner. And this is a total wing. I've never tried this before. Yeah. I love the mushrooms in there. Those mushrooms, those, those uh, chicken in the woods mushrooms have a very powerful flavor. And a lot of times if you put them in soup or you put them on any kind of fish or any kind of base, you really get a lot of flavor out of them. So it's kind of why I stuffed them in there like that. All that juice and all that water out of those soaked out, really blended with the flavor nicely. Really does kind of have like a Western taste to it. Where's the mushroom? Oh, are these little ones? I gave you one. Oh. Mm. Oh, is that what made it feel kind of meaty? Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. What a day. Thanks for sharing it with us, guys. High awesome. fives all around. Good work. Heck yeah. Did we it. did it, team. Success. Hey, oh. <laughs> Intercepted. <laughs> Good job, Sean. <laughs> All right, we're gonna scarf the rest of this down, go find camp, and tomorrow is another big day. morning. Good cup of joe. What a beautiful, beautiful night last night. I slept so good. I stayed warm all night. I don't even think I got under the covers. Little snugs kept me warm all night long. But today is a new day. I think first step is we get a nice balanced breakfast in our stomach. We got our plums from yesterday morning and we got a whole bunch of blackberries behind us. So fill our bellies up on that and off to the next day of adventure. We have a lot of cool stuff planned in store today. I think we're going to be hopping in these bad boys that you're looking at right here behind us and going out into the big blue. What's that mean? Nobody knows. Taco and I just got the kayaks launched. We're geared up. Ocean's flat. Perfect morning for catching some fish off the bottom of the ocean. Look at that. Look at that. Calm. Plenty is a big expensive boat. Calm as a pond. Yeah, calm as a pond. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I pretty much put Taku's motor on and pushed him off. And there he goes. So let's do the same for us now. And we are off. Yoo-hoo! Adventure number two. If you're watching this, big thanks to you, Taku, for joining me here on this amazing adventure to the great north. Been given a couple of ideas on where to go out here, some local knowledge, but it's, it's anybody's guess. We're gonna have to go out there, figure it out on the fly, find where we need to fish, and harvest some more food, and then cook it, and eat it, and live a good life. Got some water on the camera, sorry guys. Let's get out there. Holy shamoli. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, pretty cool. Why hasn't, like... why hasn't Old Town sent me one? I don't know. <laughs> There's some uh, bull kelp here. You want to pick some of these up? Yes. Uh, we could probably do it on the way back. It's totally up to you. Well, it depends if it's going to be... I don't think it'll be too high. It'll still be sticking out, I think. It's almost high right now. Yeah. So I think it's... Sh noon. Yeah. Because these are really long, I think. Long and sexy? Yeah. Sexy. I got my rod. You gonna try the swim bait first or what, the grub tail? I think I'm gonna try the grub tail first. I'm gonna go with Old Faithful. Okay, so what I'm gonna go with to start today, two and a half ounce jig head. Right, yep, two and a half. There we go. And a white jig. Go with the small one first. We'll go with the smaller one first, just to see what we're playing with here. Sometimes I tend to go a little overkill. Nothing against me. Here it is. That should get dinner. Okay. So like this uh, 
All right, we're right here. Right. I guess we can try to hit this little contour line right here. Right inside. I like it. I like it. And we got Something a lot of bait even right here. There's fish just under the surface. Oh, yeah. I just saw a bait jump. Here's this. Oh. The mighty jig. Okay. We're at 40 feet of water. So we want to go out around this point into this next cove. Is that what it sounds like? Yeah. Down towards that, like, little killer whale looking rock over there. Okay. You. Let's see what this baby's got. Ooh, high, high speed, high speed. This all looks like salmon. Weird. There's some rockfish on the bottom. Not many though, I'm just seeing them. But goodness gracious, there's a lot of fucking bait. Got him, got him. Already got a fish. Already got a fish, first drop. Saw a big thing of bait roll on the screen. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Big thing of bait roll up on the screen. Saw a couple of big marks off to the side of him. First drop. And we got ourselves. Yes! Yes, baby! Woo woo! First rockfish on the board. Nice! Nice! That was easy. Second drop. Already got one. Already got one. Hit the bottom. Bring it back up with the fish. That's the name of the game. Hit the bottom. Come back up with the fish. Looks like we have a china. We got a china. Or it might be another quill back. Kind of looks quill backy. Just about the same fish. Nonetheless, we're gonna let him go. Nothing against you, man. We would really like some black rock bass, so let's let him go. Oh yeah, got him. It looks heavy. It looks pretty good. It feels it feels good. Oh, it's a, it's a halibut. Oh no, it's a sole. <laughs> Taku's on with some little flounder. I think it's a star flounder or a sole of some sort, like a halibut type of species. It's a bottom layer, uh, but a cool looking fish nonetheless. Pretty big, dude. Look at it. Wow. Is that what you call it? A starry flounder? Really rough skin, pretty cool. All right, buddy, see you later. Instant, look at all these marks on the screen. The screen is full of rockfish. Got one, got one, oh, he's gone. They're all throughout the screen here. Got him. Oh wow, that one's ripping. Oh, he's taking line. What is this? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come to Papa's. Come to Papa's. What do we got? What do we got? Oh wow, a giant quill back. Again, can't keep it, but a big one. Oh my gosh. Look at that guy. He's peeing all over me. Look at that thing. Nice rockfish. Big old quill back. I'm gonna figure out why they call him quill back here in just a sec, trying to let him go. Okay, later buddy. Whew, dang it. Too bad we can't keep those ones, that looked tasty. There's another one. What do we got? We got a rockfish, I got a rockfish. We got a black. We got dinner. We got him, we got him, we got him. Dinner in hand. We are surviving, ladies and gentlemen, on nothing but goodwill and hard work. Yes, we're eating. Success! Now I have to say, this is so freaking cool. I've been watching Taku do his kayak videos for forever and I always, always have envied how he takes his kayak out in the ocean like this. And I've done so many crazy things on my kayak that all this time I haven't gone out in the ocean. This is the first time I've taken this old town kayak out in the ocean. I gotta say, I'm not disappointed. Little depth finder on there. I got the spot lock and everything with my Minn Kota. And really it's a very effective hunting machine. I'm digging it right now. This is really, really cool. Floating around in the kelp, one with Mother Nature, catching fish. Oh, that was him. Got him. Oh, come on. 
Oh, oh come on. Got him now. Got him. I think that's a black. I saw him jumping out there. They surface and eating bait off the surface. So I reeled in and I bombed this thing as far as I could, landed right next to where I saw him. Got hit three times and I finally got this one. Almost positive this is a black. Oh, he's strong. Oh God, he's really strong. Oh, he's really strong. What is this? I'm gonna loosen my drag a little, I'm gonna lose him. What is this? Big black, yep. Yes, that's what we came for right there. Yes, look at the size of this thing. <laughs> Trophy, he's ours, taking him home. All right, yes. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cast out, I'm gonna reel in quickly. Got quite a bit closer to where I just hooked that thing. Got it, oh. Got him, oh. Okay. This is working. This is working. Oh my God, they are, I am completely surrounded right now. Got him. I gotta really set the hook on these things, obviously. Oh yeah. They got a very, very tough mouth, if you guys couldn't tell. Oh yeah, another really nice black rock. Yes. Okay. That should be plenty. I'm actually gonna let this guy go. Time to just fish for fun. A challenge like this, main point, being in a beautiful place like this, look at that fish. Main point of being in a, a place like this is to not over harvest. That's kind of the beauty of a fishery like this. Um, when you come out in a kayak, especially, it's, you don't have to kill everything. Um, and you don't have to, to mortally hook everything that you catch either. So the fish I'm catching are right in the top of the lip. Now it's time to have some fun. Oh, I got something. I got some, I got a fish. I'm on, come on. What is this? Oh, another black, I think. Yep, another black rock fish. Good one too. Chill, buddy, chill. That. Now the nice one, a little smaller. Oh. Got him. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Nailing him. We're nailing him. Nice fish. Yes. This is so much fun. Actually, give me a spot lock right in the spot here. Got a school of blacks. Wow, another really nice one. Check that bad boy out. Yeah, baby. Beauty. Thanks, little guy. Mwah. See you later. Okay, do it again. This is fun. Oh, they're jumping right in front of me. Got him. Oh. Got him. Yeah. Oh, that was a thick of mine. That was a good one. He is. Hey buddy. Oh jeez. Oh, he's not ready. He's not ready. But I am. There he is. <laughs> See you later. I'm trying something. I gotta try something. Jerk bait. What'd you call me? That's right. I called you a jerk bait. I gotta try it. This is the perfect little wounded fish presentation. You cast it out there, you yank it around, and the fish absolutely eat it like it's their prey. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is gonna be, oh, he came right by the boat. I think I can get him. Oh, got him right at the boat. Oh, top water, rock fish. Yeah, baby. Oh, that was so cool. There he is. There's my guy. Okay, he's gone. Perfect. Let's do it again. Who won't believe what I just got? We're out here trying to get a couple of fish for talking video. And I got a salmon. Look at this thing. <laughs> On the Mr. Twister tail. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> so cool. So many species. Let's see if we can get another one here. There are so many fish right underneath me. It's unbelievable. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. what is this? What's going on here? There's a fish that just hit it right on the surface. Oh, there it is. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? 
What was that? It hit it on the surface. Oh, it's a salmon. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, it's coho, coho. Oh my gosh. Pretty sure that's a coho. But we can't keep these. They're closed today. Whoa, whoa. Oh, holy crap. So wild, man. So wild. There it is. <laughs> Oh! Oh! Oh gosh, he freaking hit the... <laughs> he hit the side. There it goes. Oh, that was kind of crazy. Right when I cast it. He just landed right, he just started hitting it immediately. That was crazy. Here's another salmon. Another salmon. Really nice one too. Oh, look at him. What a nice, oh, this might be a king. No, it's a coho. Now, we can't keep these things, so I'm not even gonna take them out of the water. Oh, there he goes. So cool. We got yellowtail rockfish, we've caught black rock bass, we've caught quillbacks, and now we've caught coho salmon. What an absolutely interesting day out in the kayak. Such a neat experience to be out here in this thing. So peaceful, so quiet, and so versatile. Okay, I see more, I see more dropping. Okay, this has to be one of the biggest jellyfish I've ever seen. You guys gotta see this. Super cool. Let's check out some of this kelp. We got a bull kelp here. They still have their saris. These things right here, these blobs, that's their, their, their seeds. Oh, actually, look at that. See that? This guy, this kelp right here has dropped his seeds right here, the, the sorry. See how there's holes in them? That's because he dropped the seeds. I think it might just keep this one frond that I just accidentally yanked off. That'd be cool. That'd be good in a little seaweed salad or something or pickled seaweed but i can see here that talk is pulling some very green foliage up out of the water let's go talk to him i'm not just pulling it i'm rolling He's it rolling it <laughs> oh boy look at that that looks tasty <laughs> beautiful i like how you're doing that too you guys can see there he's just taking this entire this is bullwhip kelp yep that's what it is that's a great little way to store it, great way to keep it clean. Beautiful. Okay, so are we going for any other kinds or are we just gonna get this? This is all we can get? Okay, perfect. I like it. I'm a big fan of any kind of seaweed. If you guys didn't see the stay fishing adventure here a few weeks ago that we did uh, along the coastline around the same area, really, we picked a bunch of seaweed and I never made you the seaweed salad. So now that we have the professional himself to make the seaweed salad, that's what we're doing. We got everything we came for. We got a beautiful bounty of fish in the bow of the boat. We got a big roll of seaweed. Let's go eat. All right, time to go to town on this kelp and this fish. Taki's gonna do this recipe. I'm gonna get a couple other things prepared, but this is a style of fish that I've always wanted to eat the way he's gonna be doing it today. So, so I'm very excited to have him doing this. He's getting some stuff ready in the van. I'm gonna get some fish prepared, and then he's gonna come out here and whip it up for us here on Stay Fishy. First ever appearance of Mr. Taku cooking on Stay Fishy. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Would you look at that? Taku knife. He's already scaled this when we got back to the dock, so what I'm gonna do is put my knife right down that spine. What a catch. Almost killed myself. Run that blade way down the spine like so. But I'm gonna try to do a nice, slow cut down this entire thing so I get the most meat possible and get that stuff that's down close to the bone that has the most fat on it. Felicio number one. number two. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to the master chef himself. Welcome, Mr. Taku. Tag me in. Tag me in, Gordon. <laughs> here he comes. Tag me in. Here we go. <laughs> Gotta make a little slit right here. 
little easy access to hold. I'm gonna just dip this in this boiling water really quick. It's gonna blanch the skin. I'm gonna do this tail side as well. That's it. I'm gonna cut the skin. Now I can make little slices for sashimi. No sashimi slices here. Jordan loves sashimi, so you know I love that about him. Rockfish is a little bit of a firmer fish when it's raw, so I do like to cut it pretty thin. And what that skin's gonna do is just give it a little bit extra texture. It's all about the textures and the presentation, everything, <laughs> and the freshness. <laughs> Man, that looks awesome. Now, I've never eaten rockfish raw. I've always watched, talked to his videos and seen a lot of his different recipes with a lot of the rockfish species that he eats raw, so I'm very excited. It's one of my very favorite meats. I'm excited to try it a new way. This is a nice knife. I don't even have one of these. <laughs> you guys know Mar uh, Marlon bought this for Jordan, and I had a limited release, limited drop. That's my name right there. I did a collab, knife collab with another YouTuber named Ricky. I only dropped a hundred of them. Marlon bought one and gifted it to Jordan. Yes. Jordan uses it all the time now. Yeah, you guys have seen it in every single Stay Fishy episode and pretty much Addicted episode too. So this is a very the guest appearance for the guest knife. I don't even have one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we have this right here. This is that kelp that we picked off. What I'm gonna do is we'll just uh, slice this thinly, like noodles. Jordan said he wanted seaweed salad. So I was like, okay, we could do that. We can make that work for you. Look at how cool that looks as you slice it. Yes. I love the way that, that's very satisfying. Yeah, now we you- get to start the one, just a YouTube channel where we do this. Yeah. Cut up satisfying <laughs> things. Just the satisfying. It's gonna satisfy my now you kinda, too. Now you kinda also understand why I rolled it up, right? Uh -huh. This yep. makes it, this process so much easier. Now this is seemingly looking like a lot of the seaweed salad that I eat in restaurants and stuff. What, what's mm -hmm. the difference in the seaweed that you would use for that? I know this is kelp obviously, but... Right. Uh, for that they usually use sea lettuce. Okay. I believe, yeah. Gotcha. Sea lettuce is just a different type of seaweed that grows in the intertidal zone. Unfortunately we were out there during high tide so it wasn't exposed at all. No. So this right here, I'm just going to take this, put it in that boiling water and watch that color change immediately. Mm. I think mean, it's ready. So long. <laughs> <laughs> the longer arm. These are uh, custom chopsticks as well that I just I made the other week. <laughs> Those are my favorite. I feel like it really Incorporates the flavor of the region that you're in. Yeah. All right, now we'll finish it off. Let's put a little bit of sesame oil in there. I have some delicious Alaskan smoked sea salt. Oh yeah, nice generous amount of that. Once you blanch the um, kelp, it's no longer salty. So you can add a bit of salt. If you eat it fresh, it's actually very salty. A bit of ginger, pickled ginger. Black pepper as well. I'll just cut it. I'm gonna cut it up just so it's a little bit uh, not not as long. I'll just take the knife to it. Just a couple couple cuts there. That makes a big difference there, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Always taste your food while you're cooking. That's a big rule of mine too. If you want to make good food. The chef almost should never be hungry by the time it's served. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's been tasting his meal yeah. the entire time. Yeah, I'm always full. <laughs> a little bit more salt. Boy, that looks amazing. Yeah. I can't believe I haven't done that more. Sesame seeds. And I have some special ikura that I'm prepared. So I'm gonna just finish it off with that. And 
Sis me off. Bam. That's it. Mm -hmm. Done. Well done, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How Look how that easy take? that was. <laughs> Took a lot longer to catch it, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, that was incredible out there today. It's yeah. time to enjoy. It was a lot of fun. It's time to try all this. Go second piece in. I'm gonna go with shmorgi. I'm gonna shmorgi right off the bat. It's probably not the proper way, but I'm not that proper of a person. Outstanding texture to that rockfish. Mm. Let me try it. I was thinking in my mind, soy sauce. Mm -hmm. But the sesame oil yeah. is such a better compliment. Yeah, you can add a little you, bit it, of it, All you taste flavor. is the flavor of the fish instead of the flavor of the sesame. <laughs> Long one. <laughs> and that sea salt, if you guys are ever in Sitka, Alaska, we both actually scored the same sea salt from the same place. Go to get some smoked salt, or if you can get any refined sea salt and get be able to smoke it like that, that's through the roof on that flavor. Mm -hmm. Get in there, Brookie. Those are custom chopsticks, so they don't really. Man, mm. I don't know if I'd wow. ever cook one of those again. That's incredible. Mm, it's That's better like this than cook. What an experience this week has been. You guys, you need to be on the lookout for all the videos that come out. There's going to be videos on Outdoor Chef Life. There's going to be videos from this trip on Addicted. And I thank you so much for being here for this video here on Stiff Fishy Adventures. This is a true adventure, a family adventure. A lot of love spread around this place and just an incredible time had. Thank you all so much for being here this week. And until next week, same time, same place, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.